Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org here with SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage from IBM Edge 2013 in Las Vegas. Going to talk about the intersection of storage and networking. Joining us as a Cube alum, it's Sean Walsh, Senior Vice President of Corporate Marketing for Mamulex. Sean, welcome back to the Cube. Thank you very much, Stuart. Appreciate it. So, Sean, it's actually it's been a little while since we've talked. Uh, Amulex has gone through some changes. You had a recent acquisition that you closed in Endes. Yep. Can, can you bring us up to speed as to kind of the where, where is uh, Amulex? And can you explain this acquisition, which, to be honest, a couple of us in the industry have been kind of scratching our heads a little bit on? Sure, I'd be happy to. So, part of what uh, we looked at as an organization was as we looked at Fiber Channel in our One Command Vision product that you've reviewed, we really got into understanding storage management and looking at it from an end-to-end -end perspective. As we started looking at FCOE and iSCSI and NAS and other forms of storage, we came to the conclusion that we don't have the right information in order to do the job as you would in an Ethernet world, because you do have loss uh, capabilities inside those networks. They're not all lossless. And how do you do that? So when we started investigating options, we came across Endace as a solution. And when we looked at that, there was a great deal of similarity in how they approached the market. Okay, so c can you fit for us where in the stack this fits exactly? Because I think, you know, IBM has lots of management pieces, including sure. the Tivoli line. Uh, the, the switch guys all have their pieces there. Um, I, I'm, I'm having a little t trouble trying to grasp where that sits in there. Sure, so it's actually an augment to that. So it kind of sits on the sidelines to the switches and the routers and the other traffic uh, management equipment. And this essentially records network traffic. So whether it's an IBM Tivoli or a Splunk or some other application, they have traffic dashboards and they'll go, hey, you know, smoke alarm went off, looks like we may have a, a denial of service or a credit card fraud problem or other sorts of things. Start recording traffic here so we can see what's happening and then play that back and do the analysis and do, if required, deep packet inspection or that sort of thing. So from our perspective, we're tapping into the span ports. So we work with folks like Arista and Gigamon and Anui. They tap into the switching infrastructure, and then we record the traffic that they aggregate up. Okay, so uh, you know, analytics is an area that's been kind of growing, especially in the networking space. You've got a lot sure. of data, a lot of data points. I heard you mention like Splunk there. Yep. Uh, is this kind of kind of tie into the some of the analytics space then? Absolutely. So it's a, it's basically a service platform for those analytics. Uh, we're not going to try and write better security software than RSA and all the other things that go with that. But what they don't have is the ability to do 100% capture and have that forensic uh, capability to look into the data and then see where the problem is. So it's the marriage of those two things together that are creating this solution. So we have a major sports broadcasting company that's using this today, and they're using it to control jitter in terms of delivery across the various networks of networks that they're dealing with. Uh, we have a major e-commerce site that's using it for credit card fraud detection. Uh, we have others that are using it for denial of service attacks. But in all of these cases, what's common is they have what they call death by dashboard. They have hundreds of dashboards telling them there's something wrong, but no ability to do root cause analysis, and we give them that ability. Really, an enterprise sure. mindset has moved uh, into somebody that's working with the hyperscale. Can you share any kind sure. of design wins you've got out there in, in those guys? Well, I can't share necessarily design wins, but I can talk about the, uh, the nature of what we're doing. Uh, the irony is, is that many of these web giants are even more proprietary about which technology they're using than the classic OEM customers that we deal with. But when you talk about what's happening, let me give you an example. Uh, we did uh, a, a deployment that we're working on with a, with a major web video company. And the front end registration, login, um, validation of user password and all that other stuff is done on very low cost, um, one gigabit technology today. It hasn't even moved to 10. The back end, there's two components to the back end. One is the content delivery side, and the reason that they've picked our technology is the number of concurrent sessions that can be supported with this offload technology we have inside of our silicon. And then the second is the Hadoop big data sorting pieces of it. So in that mid-tier of the cloud, uh, you're seeing the migration to 10 gig and low latency happening concurrently. You know, are customers, you know, still kicking and screaming and fighting and it's going to take them decades to move, you know, or, you know, are, are they starting to look and, and adopt new technologies? So the short answer is, uh, I think the answer to that is no. Um, you know, I have this picture that I use that's actually a, a, a meme I've created that has a picture of Charlton Heston holding up a shotgun and it says, you can have fiber channel when you pry it from my cold dead hands. And those who do storing for, storage for a living feel that way. And I don't think that we're ever going to change their mind. 
Um, you know, the whole FCOE side of it, you know, where are we seeing traction with that? The service provider guys. So in those cases where you look at people like Terramark and Rackspace and these other guys, they may not own all the servers, but they own the networking infrastructure they plug into, and they want one back end. The telco guys have embraced that. Um, the hyperscale guys are just the opposite. They don't want FCOE or iSCSI because they're running their own file system or you know some other file system. So it depends upon the segment. But the short answer is is that um, in the traditional segments, no, you're, you're definitely seeing resistance. Uh, I want to give you a chance. So if, if if change is tough and the hyperscale market is yep. kind of the hot space, you know what, what's exciting you in the industry? You know what's what, what, where's the areas that are uh, keeping you uh, you know focused? Sure. So, you know, I, I know it's trite to talk about cloud and big data, and, you know, I know that's the, the theme of the show, but quite honestly, those are the most interesting segments as we go forward. And the reason for that is the role of storage changes in these applications. It's not the same device drivers. It's not the same protocols. Uh, it's a different go-to-market model. So, you know, just from a, from a pure corporate perspective, uh, it's, it's been a new challenge and a new opportunity for us, and it's leading us into markets that our new Endis acquisition uh, have the same sort of go-to-market model. And one of the interesting things is, you know, uh, we just finished a security show. Now you come here and you, you know, we do, we're doing our bike giveaway, we'll probably collect 5,000 names. If you go to some of these security shows, before they walk in the booth, they turn their badge around so you can't see who they are, and, you know, very similar sorts of things in this cloud hyperscale market. So the thing that I like about it is that it allows us to put forth a value proposition to solve a very specific problem and the merits of that solution stand on its own. It's not just about hype, and it's not just about who has the best giveaway in their booth. It's do the really smart people on the other end of the web browser look at what you put on your website or the papers that you're presenting and go, these guys have created incremental value in the market. And so far, we're seeing their response saying, we are creating incremental value in the market. Okay, well, Sean, we always try on theCUBE to bring the smartest people on, extract the signal from the noise, and I really appreciate you joining with us, talking about some of the you know, hot and important technology trends that are going on in the industry. Uh, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org, uh, SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage from IBM Edge 2013 in Las Vegas. We'll return right after this brief break. Thank you.